Are we ready for the Teofimo Lopez Jermaine <laughs> Ortiz fight? And yep. tell me if we are. And yes, uh, go ahead. We are ready for that, and uh, <laughs> I wish we. I and wish everything we that goes with it: the controversy, <laughs> the decision back and forth, who won, who didn't win. You know, yeah. do do we need that national commission? Which I think we do. Well, hang on. Before you get into it, let me just say that. One more thing, and then I want to hear everything you have to say because, like I said, you you were right on the money with the pick, uh, Ortiz by decision it looked good. But when I when I hear all the controversy, I don't look at that fight and think. I kind of look at it the way you saw the Fury and Ganu fight. You were like, oh, they didn't expect much from Ortiz, and he actually did pretty good. But I thought that Tio won us a, a, a close fight. But I also thought that from a from an optics standpoint, you it's very hard to win the fight when you're trying to stay away from the guy all night. I hate that style. It cost De La Hoya a fight uh, later in a big fight. I, I forget who, who did that. Yes, he, he could have won that fight and he just ran away from him the whole round. Anytime someone does that, I almost look at it like at that when, when you're that extreme with it, that like, dude, dude like give him a 10 8 for the other guy. At least the other guy's trying to fight. You're just trying to stay away. I hate when they do it. He played defense, but I'm curious to hear. Did you think that the obviously the 17, 117, 111 score is insane? But I'm curious to hear if you thought that um if you thought that Lopez won the fight. And uh man, Teofimo, I I feel bad for the kid, man. He's having some mental health struggles. His response on the mic after the fight is just he has no one around him telling him, please don't say that on an open mic to the audience. You know, it's just, it's sad to watch what's happening. You know, I, I'll start this way. I give credit to the commentators that a lot of times they howl for their meals, not just them, all of them. And whatever their boss wants to hear, their boss, of course, being the promoter who's got to deal with the network and ultimately pays them, uh, or whatever their boss wants them to say, they say. And they don't go against it. And their boss would be Bob Arum in this case, right? Top rank. They want Teofimo to win. And he's the A-side. But they they didn't. They, they, they didn't like the decision. They definitely didn't like the disparity in the score uh, by Steve Weisfeld. And they, they, they didn't like the comments that he made. And usually... Sometimes these commentators will say nothing, and that's saying a lot. Just say nothing when you should say something, or you, it's obvious that you, you thought it was weird what was said, and you don't say nothing, right? That silence is deafening sometimes. And sometimes when you're that silent, you couldn't be louder with, with what people realize you must be thinking, right? So they did say something about both his comments that were really strange, right? I mean, some of the historic references he was making, Ken, and yeah. and and he's talking religion in between cursing, and, and he's, I don't know. It, it, uh, you have a right to say, hey, we just hope he's okay, you know, and he's got the right people, whatever. Um, we do. But um, I thought, I... I thought that the decision was bad, and I thought the one seventeen one eleven made it worse. And I did think one commentator was strange. I kept saying because everyone was like, "How could the one judge have it one seventeen one eleven?" And it's like he kept going out of his way. One commentator, um, he's a great Steve Weisfeld's great judge. Steve Weisfeld's great judge. Steve Weisfeld, and I was like. Wait a minute. <laughs> that great judge g just gave anything but a great score on national TV. Why are you saying that? And why are you saying it repetitively? Repetitively. Why? It's weird. You know, he keeps saying all these glorious things about this judge who just gave anything but a glorious decision and score. So, anyway... To get away from The Godfather for a minute, or uh, The Godfather 2, um, I thought, I disagree with you, and I get it. A lot of people thought that, 
you know, Lopez deserved it because he was aggressive. If both guys ran, there'd be what, what would it be? A track meet? <laughs> uh, be no fight. So Lopez won on aggression. He should have won. You can't, you know, give a decision to a guy that's running, all that stuff. How about calling it boxing? I know that he moved a lot, and I know that he could have done more. I'm not making an excuse. Ortiz could have and should have done more. But where it differs from what the example you made about Trinidad, Trinidad uh, and, and De La Hoya. De La Hoya was winning a fight, fighting, whatever, fighting a smart fight, controlling range, <laughs> using the chair, <laughs> moving a little bit, but being smart. He's winning the fight, then in the th- uh, last three rounds, he decides to basically go kind of like we just want to watch the football game, right? So, into prevent defense that sometimes you see in football, where he just tried not to lose, <laughs> tried to hold on to the the lead, and by doing that, he blew it. He blew the lead. He blew his really blew his opportunity to complain because of the way he ran for the last three rounds. That's different than a guy who comes in with a strategy, who's fighting a much better puncher, a much more athletic guy, a much more explosive guy, which Teofimo Lopez is, and he's got a strategy and he executes it for 12 rounds to box because he knows if he don't, he's going to get knocked out maybe. So he's got a strategy to box to win the world title. And from round one to... To round 12, he sticks to that strategy. He doesn't change. He sticks to it all night long. And again, people would rather see excitement. They would rather see aggression. They would rather see bombs going off. I understand. I would too, uh, to a degree. I love boxing. Uh, Was there maybe a little too much in spots where, again, I said it early, where Ortiz could have done a little more Yes, but I thought he did enough. I thought that he came in there with the plan he needed, and that's what boxing's about. <laughs> it's about the. It's supposed to be about the one fair place <laughs> that sometimes when life's not fair, that ring is supposed to be about the one fair place where life can become fair. And that's why we need a national commission. Okay? I'll leave on that. Rob, put up the petition. I know you put it up there all the time, but we have our crew. I have my my A-team, you know, Pedro Martinez Fraga, Dan Donovan, Keith Sullivan. Um, They're all lawyers. One's a former congressman. We are. We are going to Congress. Oh, by the way, remember I promised, remember a few weeks ago when we had that, uh, again, a controversial decision, situation where Virgil Ortiz, I thought he looked very good, but he was in there with Lawson and they stopped the fight really early in the first round. And I was all over, so were the fans, all over Tony Weeks saying, get him out of there. Really, I've seen too many mistakes by Tony Weeks. Get him out of there. And and he got blasted. And then he defended himself on his social media. Remember that, Ken? Yeah, A little course. while after that. And he, and he put it up and he took it down. Suspiciously quick. Sus- suspiciously quick, put it up, and he said, the reason I stopped it, basically, is because uh, Lawson had failed a brain scan. Took it right down, because that, that is criminal. That is scary. That's scary. You're saying that the commission in Nevada allowed him, knowing that he failed a brain scan, allowed Lawson to go in the fight where he could have died. Could have got killed right there, one punch. That's what you say. Took it down. And... And then what did I say, Ken? What did I say that day? I said, I promise you. I promise the fans out there, the ones that care about this sport. And I figure if you're here, you care about this sport. And we got over 300,000 subscribers. I promise you, give you my word, that we're, boxing doesn't investigate itself, doesn't correct itself, doesn't look out for fighters. It doesn't doesn't have a mechanism does, to do that. I promise you we would. I promise you that we would get answers. I promise you that 
we would go with our team to the Nevada Athletic Commission and demand answers. Demand answers. Basically, what am I saying? Demand explanation and an investigation to get answers. And if not, we'll, we'll take it to the next point. Well, I promise you, and I just want to report back on you. Our team sent that letter, a legal letter, to the Nevada State Com Athletic Commission. And we got a call back. We got a response. We have a meeting. Our lawyers, our, in this case, our lead lawyer, attorney, the great, and he is. They're all great, but he is. And as a man, too. Otherwise, I wouldn't be throwing such flowers because I think they're both connected. How you are as a person and how you are, you know, as a professional. Um, Pedro Martinez Fraga will be getting, having a conference with the proper people, the appropriate people for such a meeting uh, this week. Okay? This week. I will report back to you. I just wanted to let you know that it's not just words, you know, just to say the thing because it hits me at that moment. It sounds right to say it, you know. Uh, you know, it might lend itself to a little, you know, it's, it's good theater, it's not theater. It's not theater. It's a sport that has not been looked out for for a long time, maybe ever. A sport where the fighters, the participants of the sport are not properly looked out for. And we're trying to change that. We're trying to change that.